Hi designers! Now that you're familiar with the selection tools and you're getting used to Photoshop, we're going to get into our first project, which is using your three photos that you took in Photo Booth uh, and a poem that you wrote about yourself to create uh, an interesting composition that's all about you. You should have saved your Photo Booth photo photos into your graphic design unit one folder on your desktop should look something like this uh, maybe you took more than one more than three photos um, so but you're just going to choose three and I'm going to show you how to open those up so uh, this is obviously not me I did find these on the internet because I like this guy's facial expression um, and I know that can be a little bit hard working with photos of yourself um, but this should be just really fun for you. So I'm going to choose this one. I'm also going to hold command on my keyboard so I can choose another one. And let's go with this one. And then we're going to hold control on the keyboard, click on the files, open with Photoshop. Remember if you just double click the files they're going to open in preview, which you can't do anything with. All you can do is preview them. You want to open with Photoshop. And because I have Photoshop running, these are uh, opening up fairly quickly. If your Photoshop is not started yet, um, it might just take a couple minutes for it to load, but that's no uh, problem. The next thing you're going to do uh, is use these photos. And you can see, because I got it from the internet, it's very low quality. Yours should be higher quality than this. But you're going to use your selection tools, which are the first three tools up here, the set of lasso tools. I'm sorry, the marquee tools, the lasso tools, and the magic wand and quick selection tool. You might have already started developing your favorite tool, um, and your instructor I'm sure has showed you some tricks, but it's really important that you know how to use all of those. My favorite is the quick selection tool. The shortcut is W on your keyboard if you'd like to learn that. And you can see it comes up here. And the brush is very large. If I use this, it would actually select the entire image. So what I want to do is deselect that, Command D on my keyboard, and change the brush size. I can do that up here uh, in the options bar by changing the size. Or on the keyboard, I can use the left and right brackets to make it go up and down. And that's very useful, especially when you want to get a smaller area in maybe a more uh, tricky selection. So I'm just going to click and drag across the uh, image here. I mean, you can see if I get too much, it's going to pop out and select the whole thing. I can either uh, deselect and try that again. But if it happens again, you might want to try another option, which is actually to use the option key. It gives you a minus sign, and that's going to subtract from your outline. And sometimes that can find the edges a little bit better. If you have a selection where there's still a little bit left, you can use one of your other tools, like the lasso tool. I like the polygonal lasso tool. I'm going to hold shift, that's going to give me the plus sign to add. And very carefully I can click around that area that I want to add in. Double click when I'm done and it will add that to my selection. Now for this project uh, I want you to make very clean selections. Um, we want to get all of the parts of your face. We don't want any missing ears like we would have here. Once you have a clean selection I'll take just a minute more and get a little bit more of this and maybe a little bit more of his hair. You can also zoom in to be able to see. As you can see, this is too fuzzy to actually zoom in any farther. But right there is a pretty clean selection. Then I'm going to take and copy. I can come up here to the menu bar and select copy, or I can hold Command C on the keyboard. And I'm going to paste that into a new file. If you haven't opened your new file yet, go up to File, New. The default setting for graphic design class is 8 by 10. Make sure it's set on inches. If it's set on pixels, you'll get this tiny little thing that opens up and a resolution of 200 and we will be printing these so we're going to choose CMYK color and we'll get into the differences in the color profiles later on in the class and always 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 you want to go up to the top where it says name and put your last name first name project name I think this is 1.5 before you click OK that way when you save it it's already named properly now I've already copied the first image so now I can paste it 
and you can see it's really tiny so I'm going to use the move tool to move it around you can move it on the side here um, and then you can transform it which means make it bigger or rotate it you can do that either by clicking show transform controls I like to hold shift on the keyboard so that it doesn't get distorted or I could also hold command T on the keyboard and it gives me the same thing that's my preferred method but if you forget you will want to remember to use the move tool for that so move your photos um, across the bottom or you can even put them uh, to the side you're going to do each of the three photos as you can see that I did here one two three uh, and make them different sizes and compose them in an interesting way across the bottom the next step you're going to add your poem which means you need to bring up the Word document so it's easy to copy and paste your poem and each line of your poem is going to be a different text layer. You're going to use the type tool for this, it's the T um, and its shortcut is also T, easy to remember. And at first I just want you to get in all of the text and then you're going to change the fonts. So if it comes up uh, really large like mine is, you can just change the font size up here on the options bar. Put it in some normal font uh, like Arial Black and you can either just type your uh, each line of your poem in um, or you can copy and paste if you wrote something um, very poetic and not very mem memorable. Um, I'm going to just look back here and see what the second line was. And so to create another type layer I'm going to click off that layer and use my type tool and click back on. So we're going to describe Lance by calling him creative, ambitious, determined, and I don't know, funny. Use whatever adjectives apply to you. And now you can see I can move this line around separate from this line. Once you have all of the lines of text on separate uh, type layers, uh, you're going to transform them and actually make them into a composition. So as you can see here in my example, I made Lance really large. Um, that's probably a pretty important thing to know about yourself is your first name. And it's not for you to know, it's for everyone else looking at the design. You're always communicating with your audience. So you can make that really big change it into an interesting typeface. You can play around with all of the typefaces here. Let's find something that's different. Ooh, I like that. It goes with Lance. Looks a little medieval. And with something that is, uh, this is called a distorted font. It has a lot of details in it. You want to make it really large. You would not want to use this font for um, something like this second, um, this second layer. You can always use your move tool to move the layer around. So, and the reason you want it very large is so that it's readable. This font has so much detail and so much distressing in it that it's hard to read, so it needs to be very large. Something like Arial is a lot more readable, so it can be um, smaller. I also want you to change the color, and you do that by using your type tool. Make sure you're working on the correct layer. Select the uh, the text and then up here in the options bar you can click on uh, the color uh, swatch and then change the color and this is up to you what um, color scheme you use. Uh, one last thing and this is kind of an extra thing if you want to get really creative or take on an extra challenge um, you can actually rotate the text and so if you click on it with the type tool and hold command um, you'll see you get the transform controls so that you could make it larger or smaller if you wanted but if you move your mouse uh, over to the corner you get the two curvy arrows and that way you could actually rotate this text around and so you could give it even more uh, movement um, in your design and make it more interesting by creating a little variety that way very lastly you're going to uh, create a background color and you have two tools to choose from you can either choose the paint bucket and the shortcut for paint bucket uh, is G or the gradient tool which is also G 
The paint bucket uses the foreground color right down here, so you could choose a foreground color. I don't know if Lance likes pink, but that's what we're going to use. Um, and then you click on it, and whatever uh, pixels are there, all these pixels are white, when I click on it, uh, it will make that whole area that color. The gradient uses both the foreground and the background color, so I can set the background color to something different and then use the gradient tool and you can see up here you can set the type of gradient that you want you can play around with this it's really fun um, and then you click and drag from one area to the other and it will make it shift from one color to the other now you can see this was set on radial gradient I could also choose the linear gradient which just goes straight from one color to the other and the best way to learn these tools is just to play around with them to pay attention to the options up here on the options bar to click on them and see what uh, what they do and what looks good. So again, going back to the example, we're looking for you to have three images with clean selections uh, composed or transformed in an interesting way that fills up the space in your composition. We're looking for you to have your I am poem uh, with each line of the poem on a separate uh, layer and for you to also use an interesting font and different sizes uh, of the font. And then finally, for you to use the paint bucket tool or the gradient tool in the background. Have fun.